Hey guys, what's happening? We're back with another Diablo 4 quarterly update. I'm a bit behind in this one. This one's from like June, and I think another update came out like in August or something. So we're like a couple months behind. It's all good. Let's do it anyways. Um, this one's about the Necromancer, I believe, and I got a lot to say about it. So anyways, let's let's read. Let's see what's up. Let's see what's new with Diablo 4. Um, but there's a Necromancer. I guess that's like a Blood Golem, maybe? Um, hello and welcome to the mid-year Diablo 4 quarterly update. We hope you enjoyed last quarter's behind the scene. Look at the art of Sanctuary and its dungeons. Yeah, it was pretty cool. We did enjoy it. That blog and our previous updates are available here. If you missed out, we're good. I'd also like to take a moment to congratulate Diablo Immortal on its launch. Uh, <laughs> okay. The Immortal team worked incredibly hard to bring Diablo to life on mobile, and it's exciting to have another way to enjoy Diablo. So here's the thing, right? Because I did play a bit of Diablo Immortal lately. I played when it came out, and I'm trying to play it, but it's so boring, you know? I don't care much about the loot boxes and stuff. There's like a billion videos about that on YouTube. I just tried the game. And I gotta say, for if you don't take the loot boxes into consideration, for a mobile game, it's probably the best mobile game you can get, alright? Uh, if you don't count the loot boxes. The game is really good. It's an actual game, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, production values, you, and you know, it's backed by Blizzard, so obviously, you know, you have like, you have like, voice acting, you have like, uh, great combat, it's Diablo 3, basically. Um, you have like, cool cinematics, um... What you see is what you get in the ads, you know, you're not playing something else. It's it's really, it's really like the best game for mobile. I play it on PC. I, I'm trying to get through it. I just want to see the story. I'm not going to do like any end game loot boxes, shit like that. I'm, I'm not spending any money on it, but I'm just trying to see the story, you know, because it's pre-Diablo 3. But man, it's so boring. It's, oh my god. It's very easy where I'm at. And uh, there's nothing much happening. It's just like you're just moving forward, hitting enemies, and that's it. You just keep going forward. There's like no challenge whatsoever. And of course, I actually play a, a Necromancer in Diablo Immortal, as I did in Diablo 2, as I did in Diablo 3 expansion. Let's keep going. Um, today we're going to look at its at the final launch class, the Necromancer, which I have a lot to say, like I said. Let's keep going. Now that it's been announced on the big screen, we can jump into some of the greater, greedier details and mechanics of the class cool and we did uh, react to the trailer when it came out you can uh, you can think of this blog as a companion to that uh, to that announcement with our lead class designer adam jackson doing a deep dive into the core play styles of the necromancer some of its skills and its unique class mechanic book of the dead oh what is this someone i'm guessing we'll also look at the selection of the incredible armor and weapons that necromancers can use they do have some cool designs it's why i played the necromancer that you know the whole edgy on dead crap you know I, I do enjoy those kinds of those that kind of art you know as for the skills i'm guessing it's gonna be bone and blood blood and bone i did call it out in the trailer that's what it was uh just like in diablo 3 uh even though in diablo 2 it was poison and bone but then in diablo 3 they switched it to um blood and bone so whatever Diablo 4 is committed to the uh, principle... I thought it did have Blood Golem in Diablo 2, but that's about it. Anyways, Diablo 4 is committed to the principle of player choice. It shapes how we approach many of our systems, from character customization to the density and layout of our open world, to the design of our classes and builds. As you'll see below, the Book of the Dead focuses on, the, on this idea of choice and what kind of necromancer you want to be. I want to see what this Book of the Dead is. We hope you enjoyed this update and look forward to your thoughts and reactions. Later this year, you can expect to hear more about how we plan to support Diablo 4 after launch, including our plans for Seasons. Hopefully more than than uh, Diablo 3, because Seasons, Diablo 3, nothing happens. It just like resets, but you don't get anything new, like ever. Um, I don't think you ever get anything new. Armor, skills, you just get like 10 billion extra damage per per set, so it's bullshit. We're grateful to have you with us on this journey. Thank you for playing the games we make. Joe Shelley. All right, cool. Uh, here's, I'm guessing this is the trailer for the Necromancer. Uh, gotta watch it on YouTube. Fuck it, we already saw it. Um, all right, all right. Before we, before we get into the Necromancer. All right, fuck it. Let's read this first. <laughs> Greetings, heroes of Sanctuary. Today we're thrilled to announce that a fan favorite, the Necromancer, is once again returning to slay and subjugate their enemies and necrotic ma magics. We had a blast working on this iconic class, and we can't wait to get into your hands. We know that the Necromancer has a storied history in our franchise, and we are taking a lot of care to give players an experience that lives up to the hype. We also spend a considerable amount of time making sure that fans of Diablo 2 and Diablo 3 and Diablo Immortal versions of Necromancer see something familiar with um, what we have to offer, while at the same time creating something unique for Diablo 4. 
read on to see what the necromancer is all about so let me finally get on the bottom of this like i said i play necromancer i made necromancer diablo 2 diablo 3 expansion uh, for diablo 3 i made um uh, witch doctor so diablo 3 expansion was necromancer diablo immortal necromancer right so when they announced the necromancer i was very happy and very disappointed at the same time i was very happy because you know the necromancer is one of my favorite classes in diablo obviously uh i do enjoy the look the skills all that stuff uh it's freaking awesome however i'm also a bit disappointed because i believe they could have went for some other darker class and i keep mentioning in these videos give me like a a a death knight give me like a warlock give me a witch doctor well where you play witch doctor so maybe not give me like something you know that's dark using like the same functions let's say and like i know the fighting game community hates the word function but it's that's what the witch doctor was in diablo 3 it was a necromancer with like different skills but it's kind of like the same thing you command minions uh you have like weird magics undead magics and stuff but i really enjoy what they did with the um with the uh witch doctor because they took the necromancer they come completely changed it up they, they give him like a different lore they give him like different um different like death magic and whatnot more like nature and whatnot and it came out something that plays like the necromancer or you know that that archetype of like commanding minions but a completely different look and feel to it you know but now where i'm disappointed is that we're back to necromancer i played necro for double two three immortal and now i'm playing the necromancer again and you can say, well, why don't you play the other classes? Because the other classes look lame. I don't care about the other classes. I don't care to play freaking like a rogue or like a barbarian. You know, I, I wanted to play something dark. Like in all the Diablos. And that we're getting a Necromancer again. So at this point, it's like it's like I'm eating pizza every day. Pizza is awesome. I, I, I love pizza. But to eat pizza like every single day, you're going to get bored of it. You're going to get tired of it. You want something? You want a steak? No steak, buddy. Pizza again. Like, thanks, guys. This is like... I don't know, I feel like with Diablo 4, they were like so afraid to to take chances, like ha like what happened in Diablo 3, that they went backwards, you know what I'm saying, towards like Diablo 2 and 1, right, with the, with the classes presented to us. The good thing about Diablo 3, and it has some very good, st there's some good stuff in Diablo 3, there's some bad stuff, one of the great things about Diablo 3 is that they evolved the classes, right? You went from like... Um, well, besides Barbarian, right, was still there. But instead of having, like, a regular Archer or Valkyrie, you had, like, a Demon Hunter. Instead of having, like, a Sorceress, you had, like, a Wizard. Uh, what else did we get in Diablo 3? Instead of having a Paladin, you had a Crusader and Monk, you know? It was, like, it was like an evolution of classes. You know, I feel like we're going backwards on it. You know, why go forward? Why have, like, a Death Knight? Why, have I, why not have, like, a Warlock or some other, like dark magic kind of creature when you can just go back to necromancer once again it's like that's what people want we don't want to take any chances we want to make money let's give them what they want because you know the masses that's what they want and i'm part of the masses as well but i don't i don't agree with this i think they could have came with something so much more original so much more cooler you know just like shelve the necromancer for one or two games if the necromancer wouldn't have been in diablo 3 and Diablo uh, Immortal, this would have been a great, great, great addition to the game. I would have freaked out. I'm like, oh my god, Necromancer is back? But after you played it for like three games in a row, it's like, okay guys, give me something else. And like I said, all the other classes seem pretty lame, so... Anyways, that was my mini rant. Um, I'm excited at the same time. I can't wait to play him, but at the same time, I'm like, Ugh, Necromancer again? Really, guys? As much as I love it, it's you can't have steak every day or pizza or whatever, you know? But anyways... Positive thoughts, of course I'm gonna main the Necromancer, guaranteed. Let's see what's up. Class features. The Necromancer has two different types of resources they use, Essence and Corpses. Mm, kind of like mana and yeah, the Corpses, yeah? Corpse explosion and stuff, you know, raise dead, right? Essence is their primary resource which restores itself automatically at a slow rate. Mana. Using basic skills on the Necromancer will also grant Essence, allowing them to cast their skills more often. Okay, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, again, I played a lot more, I didn't play the expansion for Diablo 3 too much, uh, because the game was really lame and I, I found it really boring. Um, I beat the game with the Necromancer, I think I did a couple of, like, the expansion, of course, a couple of, like, rifts, and then I was done with it pretty much. But, um, it reminds me a bit of the, uh, from what I remember from Diablo 3, the Witch Doctor, which you, like, use, like, your basic skills 
to like gain mana and then you drop all your mana on like uh, fire bats or something back when the game came out and they were like really don't do his strongest his strongest skill right and then you like you start like shooting again like poison darts until you get your mana back and then you do like fire bats again right with everything else in between so I'm, that's that's what i'm getting from this and i know in diablo 3 was uh something about i don't, I don't remember was it essence was it magic and blood or something like that depending on the skills you're using you're gaining more of the other resource and you're then again you're just like dropping that resource on powerful skills right so it's the same thing corpses corpses on the other hand are the leftover remains of enemies who die near the necromancer these remains can be used to summon skeletal minions or to power various other skills such as corpse explosion yep we spoke about it in addition to appearing when enemies are killed near the, near the necromancer corpses can also be generated via various effects giving you additional control over how often you want to interact them that's actually quite good because for example, I, what I didn't enjoy in the, the previous games with Corpse Explosion was like a really OP uh, skill. But then you find you would fight a boss with zero adds and you couldn't use that skill basically. It was, nope, you're not using it because there's no corpses around, so no point in using it. So it was just sitting on your bar for nothing, right? It was super good for like adds, but like bosses, if there was no adds in bosses, you couldn't use the skill. So it's cool that you can um, generate corpses... So you may use your corpse magic. That's that's perfect. I, I like that. Um, <clears throat> while there will be plenty of corpses at a baseline level, we're aware that some players will want to learn, lean into this resource and as a result have included plenty of options to ensure that they are not left wanting. I'm guessing stuff like casting certain spells will like create a corpse or something. Um, that's That's what it is. Let's see what we got here. These are the corpses, bloodied up. A lot of detail, looks cool, looks cool. As far as weapons and other unique gear, necromancers use swords, daggers, wands, focuses, and shields. In addition to these, they also, they are also the only class that can use sights. Okay, that's what I figured, that's perfect. I wish we'd get uh, the shrunken heads back, but whatever, not a big deal. Uh, let's see what they got for us here. Cool visuals. Obviously pale white. Love the ta the tattoos, the markings, runes, whatever those are. These are the sites, right? Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Steel and bone. Yep. <laughs> Super emo. Emo haircuts. <laughs> Makes sense. The necromancers. This is like a really cool video. I mean, that's a lot of detail for like a top-down view kind of game, you know? Yeah, look at a bit of red. I do enjoy the red, you know? Some sort of a weird armor. Skulls. A lot of details in the armor, holy crap, all the bones and shit. Wow. That's a kick-ass armor, man. Meat armor. Wow. Nice, 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 nice. Nothing too crazy, but it looks deadly, which is really cool. You don't have, like, gigantic shoulder pads, you know, but they look, like, really good. This armor looks really good. Wow, look at that, huh? See, this is why I like the Necromancer. They look freaking deadly, man. They're so edgy. Also, this is like a really good presentation video. The way it's captured, I really, really enjoy it. This one has a bit of gold. Nice. So, are sights two-handed or one-handed? I see both. This is like... Oh, shit, look at that. This is like... This is like end game, uh, the last year for armor, you know. Uh, it looks, it looks cool. It looks cool. It looks cool. It looks cool. Um, additionally, what self-respecting necromancer would be running around the world of sanctuary without curses? We're happy to say that you'll be able to put these nasty debuffs on your enemies to your heart's content with skills like decryptify and iron maiden making a return. Decryptify, I believe, slow down enemies and reduce their damage. Um, iron maiden basically. Um, returns damage to the sander 
And this was like the best skill in Diablo 2 to use against Barbarians, who just like whirlwind into you and kill themselves, and kill you at the same time. Unless you cast it on them, they whirlwind your golem, they kill themselves, good times. Uh, back then, like, it wasn't balanced at all, man. <laughs> um, I think it had like something like a 400% return damage or some shit, I don't remember. Was it 100%? I don't remember, it's been a while. Uh, playstyle. The Necromancer has four high-level playstyles that players can choose between. These playstyles are Bone, Darkness, Blood, and the Army. Again, no poison, so I guess darkness. Cool. Makes sense. Bone. Bone skills are relatively physical in nature and thus benefit more heavily from effects such as critical strike. These skills also benefit from having and spending large amounts of essence as they have various effects that can cause each of their individual attacks to be more powerful. I'm guessing... So this is... What, what they're saying here is basically you can... You can have like a melee necromancer. Because even in the past, he did have some melee skills, so... Can have like melee or range, so you can be like melee or like a mage, you know. Bone spirits, a bone spirit. Oh shit, my favorite spell from uh, Diablo 2, just because it was homing. It's back in Diablo 4, and it has now it now has a unique twist that exemplifies what bone skills are all about. Uh, bone spirit not only has a cooldown, but also consumes all essence the player currently has. Once cast, the spirit of bone is conjure, conjured, that seeks out the nearest enemy. Yep. Upon reaching them, the spirit will explode. Hopefully it's fast, and not like super slow like in Diablo 2, you know? Uh, dealing a high amount of damage to the target and all other enemies in the area. This damage is increased by a certain percentage per point of essence spent, meaning that players who spend the maximum amount of essence will deal a significant amount of damage to enemies he hit. So it's not like some sort of a bomb, basically. So you drop all your mana or your essence, and the more you drop, the more you're dealing damage. Uh, in Diablo 2, uh, Bone Spirit was actually true damage, I believe. One of the only skills in the game that actually went through like armor and magic and would just deal like true damage. Uh, true damage. Uh, it was slow, but you can cast like a shit ton of them. Uh, it was fun in PvP. This skill can also be upgraded so that when it critical critically strikes, its cooldown is significantly reduced, meaning that players who commit to generating lots of essence while also having a high critical strike chance will get a lot of damage from the skill. True. Cool, cool. Makes sense. Another bone skill that Necromancers will have access to is Bone Prison. Uh, I guess no bone wall, just Bone Prison. Uh, completely useless like in Diablo 2 from what I remember. When the player casts Bone Prison, they slam their opponent to the ground. Okay, so this is like an actual crowd control. Okay. Calling forth a circular wall of bone to surround the targeted enemy or area. Enemies cannot move through this space where while the Bone Prison persists which makes it incredibly versatile and able to combine with many other skills, even those that are not themed around Bone. Bone Prison is great for blocking off hallways, trapping groups of enemies inside them, uh, inside to set them up for an AoE attack, or to simply for simply sectioning off a group of enemies to deal with later, while you handle higher priority targets. The only thing I hope for Bone Prison uh, is that it's actually like tanky. Because again, Diablo 2, you cast Bone Prison, it would be like dead in one shot by some enemies. It was like completely useless. Um, let's watch the, uh, bone skills. Sorry. Okay. Alright. Alright, not bad. Um, actually, let me see that again. Looks more like rock than bone, but that's a thing, you know? Darkness. Darkness skills use shadow magic to overwhelm their enemies. This these kind of attacks tend to be dot based on attack multiple times in a short window, with various benefits and rewards being granted for damaging enemies in this way. Darkness skills also tend to have various debuffs and crowd control elements so that they can keep their enemies at bay while they die a slow, painful death. Decompose is a basic darkness skill that allows you to channel dark magic onto enemies dealing damage to them while also generating essence. Unlike other basic skills, Decompose also periodically summons corpses. Oh, interesting. Making it much easier to ensure that you have a steady supply on hand to use for summoning skeletons. Gotcha. Another darkness skill is Blight. Blight launches a ball of dark energy in a direction. Upon hitting an enemy or expiring, it deals an explosion of damage while leaving behind the defiled area, dealing periodic damage to enemies inside over time. So this could be like poison basically, right? This skill deals a high amount of damage to enemies who are standing in place, whether that's due to fighting your undead minions or to being contained via other skills like Bone Prison. That's such a good idea, actually. I like this. Because then it makes Bone Prison a lot more useful than just, like, being being there, you know? So actually, like, getting enemies stuck, dealing extra damage to stuck enemies, that's freaking good. 
This is what? Darkness skills. God damn it, the sound. It's a channel. Interesting. Uh, blood. Necromancer can also use the power of blood magic to siphon the life from their enemies. Not only do these skills tend to have defensive oriented benefits, but they also have many ways to turn that defense into offense for the player, empowering them and rewarding them for having large large amounts of maximum health, as well as keeping their current health total high. Blood Surge draws a small amount of blood from nearby enemies to Necromancer that then expels a Blood Nova. Blood Nova sounds cool. Dealing damage near the player's location. Again, Poison Nova in Diablo 2. Blood Nova in Diablo 4. The damage of the Blood Nova is increased per enemy drained, which insensitizes you to be in the middle of a pack of enemies for maximum effect. Reminds me of uh, Vlad from uh, League of Legends. He does the same thing with that AoE Blood Nova kind of spell. Uh, you just like you have to be like near enemies. Not a blood skill is blood mist. Upon activation, the Necromancer disperses into a bloody mist, becoming temporarily immune. Oh boy. To all damage while draining the life of any nearby enemies that they pass through. This is a universally powerful defensive skill that can give you the time you need to regroup in those dire moments where you become overwhelmed. Okay. So, once again, Vlad from League of Legends. This is the blood pool. That's what he does. Uh, I have some issues with this. I think I spoke in one of the previous videos. In Diablo 3, everybody had a get out of jail free card type of skill, you know? Uh, for the Witch Doctor, you transport yourself in the spirit realm and you can like run around uh, untargetable, immune to like everything, invincible to everything. So basically what you would do is whenever you're in danger, you use that skill, right? But at the same time, my music but at the same time uh that made the game fairly easy especially if you play like hardcore you just use that you log off right away unless they have like some sort of anti-log off system in place if they even have if they even have hardcore in this game i have no idea but that's what it um that's what it reminds me of and i don't know if that's a good idea to just be able to be immune or invincible to like everything around you instantly it's um Makes it a bit like too easy, kind of like removes all feel of danger. You know, you can just hit that key and bam, you're immune, you know, you can just get the hell out. It's kind of like, a, it makes it a bit too easy and I was hoping I'm going to have these kind of skills in Diablo 4. Because in Diablo 3, that's every character had one of these skills, like escape, you know, um, escape death. Diablo 2, nobody had any, so it was like, you die, you die. And here it's like, you die, well not really because you can just like get the hell out, you know. So what's up with this? I wish they had like longer videos. Okay. Gotcha. I gotcha. I gotcha. I got. I see how it works. Cool. Gotcha. Uh, the army, as you would expect. Again, like I said, it's kind of like Vlad from League of Legends. If you played Vlad League of Legends, then you know what this is all about. The army, as you expect, necromancers can summon the undead to their bidding, and hopefully golems as well. I believe they do. We also allow players to specialize into empowering their army as much as possible, which includes various kinds of skeletons as well as the classic golem. Cool. One advantage to this matter of playing is that it can easily incorporate the benefits of bone, darkness, or blood skills, allowing you to have a great deal of customization to how you want to interact with your army. I'm guessing if they if they actually mean like you can probably combine these these play styles, but maybe like the best way of doing stuff is combining any of the blood, darkness, or bone with the army you know this is probably like your best interaction between the skills you know as an example because these sounds very these sound very passive the the summoning skills as they were in the past as an example we believe it will be perfectly viable to have a player pursue a darkness themed army build with decompose as their basic skill to generate corpses as there is an obvious synergy there however if the player wishes to generate corpses via other means they can just as easily take a nostalgia trip to the year 2000 and just chuck bone spears at their enemies from a distance while opting for all of the bone, bone skill synergies the necromancer has to offer and yeah bone spear was huge back then uh, i think for diablo 3 it was a bit different how bone spear worked in diablo 2 it was just like a projectile that like pierced everything you know um we went through a lot of iteration on how we want the music 
on how we want the experience of summoning the undead to feel for the player and how much of their skill bar should be dedicated to the, this part of the class. To that end, we've come up with what we feel is the best possible version to ensure that players have as much customization as possible over not only their army itself, but also in which other skills they want to use to support their own unique playstyle. See, they're talking a lot about customization, but I don't see it as such a big deal. Usually people go for like one playstyle, the best one, the one that deals the most damage, which you can probably find online. Um, it's unless Blizzard is really good and they offer multiple customization choices, but it's not just customization. It has to be valid customization. It has to like actually work. It's not that you can like customize into like uh poison dagger from diablo that 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 it, that it was viable into like anything it was garbage you know but i mean you can customize into it yeah but it's garbage why would i do it you know besides having like some fun randomly you know but then once you get wrecked by random enemies you're not gonna have fun at all so i hope that ca customization is worth something you know it's easy to throw this word out oh yeah customization this customization that yeah but is it viable in the end game can, can we actually use like different skills to like you know be on par with like other classes and whatnot or the necromancer itself you know with other necromancers if they can pull that off then yeah customization is worth it if not it's, it's just like a it's just a keyword you know to like say nothing basically if a player wants to have the maximum number of summoned units possible then they will only have to dedicate two buttons to their skill bar one to raising skeletons and the other for their golem oh so that's it one type of skeletons or unless I'm guessing the skeletons get like a passive depending what kind of like skeleton you want summoned, you know, like warriors, mages, stuff like that. I was hoping to be more like Diablo 2 where you can summon like two kinds at least, you know. But I guess it's probably like, you know, you customize into it, you know, into the actual skill. So I'm guessing you only get like skeletons and golems. The raise skeleton button is a one-stop shop to raise all the different skeletons as a player can summon. And the golem summon is used to command the golem to use a unique effect that is dependent on a type of golem that is currently active. So again, the golems will be like the, um, well, the golems in Diablo 4. I don't remember the Necromancer in Diablo 4 that much. Like the uh, Gargantuans for the Witch Doctor. You can have like different kinds, right? With this setup, we found a great balance between having the necessary tools for raising and commanding a Necromancer army while also leaving room for player expression in what additional skills they want to put on their bar. This is like the new, the new uh, buzzword, player expression. How much can, how much player exp ex expression are you getting, you know? Also, I wonder how many skeletons you can summon. Um, again, Diablo 2, it was 20 skeletons, 20 skeleton mages, 20 undead summons, basically enemies that died, and like one gold. You can have, and your mercenary, you can have like 62, an army of like 62 units, you know, surrounding you. Here it looks, there's the bone golem. So see, they do look different though. You do got some warriors here, you got some mages from the looks of it. Skeleton mages, skeleton warriors. So maybe you can get like a mix of them, who knows. Um, I'm guessing I'm going to keep this number low for the skeletons. I don't think I'm going to go nuts. I think I'm going to go like, what, how many do you have here? Six? I think that's about right. Maybe like ten max. Let's talk about Book of the Dead, I'm so curious. Speaking of armies, what Book of the Dead? Speaking of armies, what self-respecting necromancer isn't wandering around with, without with one? Okay, that's it. Well, actually, that might be you. Well, we absolutely have the full support you would expect to fulfill all your undead summoning needs. We're also giving some love to players who want a more independent playstyle. Okay, so there it is. Skeletal warriors, mages, golems, blood, yeah. Shadow, I guess, shadow mages. Skirmishers for the warriors. I guess you do have warriors and mages. I mean, yeah, I don't know why I'm zooming in on this. It's obvious. Cue the Book of the Dead, the Necromancer's unique class mechanic. Ooh. Right from the moment you log, you log in, you'll start with an extra skill on your bar, Raise Skeleton. With this button, you'll Im immediately be able to raise undead warriors to fight by your side. This is like another like skill tree or what? In addition to this, you'll have access to the Book of the Dead. This is a space where you can customize your army or lack thereof with increasing options as you level your character. Okay, so this is where you customize your summons. There are three customizable summons in the space. Skeletal Warrior, Skeletal Mages, and the Golem. But why did they say it was only one <clears throat> one button for skeletons? Before, if there's like two kinds. Unless again, you're summoning both or something. Each summon also has one of three specializations that you can choose from. Only three? 
As an example, you can have your skeleton warriors as skirmishers, defenders, or reapers. <clears throat> so a normal uh, defense and attack, I'm guessing. Skirmishers are more standard. Oh, there's my explanation. Warrior, but have increased damage and reduced health. Defenders have bonus health. And reapers have slower attacks, deal damage in an AoE in front of them. And have a special wind-up attack that deals a high amount of damage. Oh, cool. In addition to this, can you interrupt this attack? Maybe. In addition to this, each specialized unit in the army has unique upgrades available to them, giving you even more customization. Cool. Each specialized unit? Giving you even more customization over how each unit in the army functions in their overall playstyle. These units and upgrades will have synergies with the various playstyles mentioned above, as well as other potentials way to, potential ways to play. Oh, select an upgrade and sacrifice. What is this? So in Diablo 2 you had... What, do you, what did you have? You had Poison Mages, Fire Mages, Ice Mages. Lightning Mages? I don't think so. I don't think it was Lightning. I think it was just like Fire, Poison, and Ice. In here you have Shadow and whatever else. In addition to all this customization, we also added the ability for players to sacrifice different components of their army for personal benefits. Next to each unit type in the Book of the Dead is an extra option to sacrifice the ability to summon that unit in exchange for a personal permanent buff. Interesting. These buffs are carefully designed and placed so that players can mix and match having none, some, or all the possible summoned units while still having relevant options to enhance their build. Hmm. So basically, if you if you don't want to like summon skirmishers no more, you like you click on this sacrifice and you're getting a permanent buff, but you can't use the skill no more. Got gotcha. you. Final thoughts. We're so excited to be able to bring the Necromancer Necromancer Diablo 4, and we can't wait to get get into your hands. Whether you're a veteran player, I am, who's put in thousands of hours, not that much, over many years, maybe. Or a new adventure in the world of Sanctuary, we hope you will have a lot of fun with what we've been able to create. As always, please, please leave us your feedback and what we've shown you so far. While we're confident that we're on the right track, we know that the best ideas and the best games are created with input from the community. Okay, Blizzard, take it easy. Thank you all so much for your patience and for joining us on this epic journey through the world of Sanctuary. We promise it will be worth the wait. Cool. Adam Jackson, lead class designer, Diablo 4. Um, this thing here, input from the community, sometimes can, it can be good, sometimes it can be bad. Sometimes the um, the companies actually listen to it and they fuck up. Sometimes they don't and they create like the best game ever. It's really like a mix of everything. It depends, it depends on a lot of things. Um, but overall... The Necromancer. Um, like I said, after reading this, I'm excited. I'm not going to lie to you. I do want to play the Necromancer, obviously. The Book of the Dead sounds really cool. It's a cool, unique take on the Necromancer. You can have, like, you can customize your army in greater detail. So, like I said, I think it's a, it's a, it'll be a mix of, like, what do you want as your main uh, skill? Do you want to play, like, Bone? Do you want to play Blood? Do you want to play uh, Darkness? And that will be supplemented by, you know, your summons and Book of the Dead and whatnot. So it looks cool. Um, definitely gonna make Necromancer. The armors look really cool. The design of the armors looks really, really cool. Just that whole video presentation-wise was really, really nice. Gets you excited for the stuff. The armors, like again, they look deadly. They look like they look very emo, which I love. But at the same time, they're very restrained. Nothing too crazy. Just enough, you know, just enough to make them look different and cool at the same time. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't wait to try this. I want to see what golems you get. Blood for sure. Gonna get blood. Clay and like fire, metal maybe. Who knows? We'll have to see what's up. But uh, it's I do I do want I definitely want to play this. I definitely want to play the Necromancer. Guaranteed. I'm a bit disappointed. I wish you got something else, something different. But at the same time, I'm excited because it is the Necromancer. So yeah, that's it. That's it for now. Thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you. Peace.